Bright blessings, everybody. This is Sersha doing a book review for Pagan Pages, and it is Everything You Wanted to Know About the Afterlife But Were Too Afraid to Ask by the very angelic Hollister Rand. She has been a recognized psychic for over 25 years, and she does, you know, individual readings as well as events, and um, she's worked with television and radio quite a bit. She is known for her very motherly voice and her kind, gentle eyes, and she is a wonderful person to, to read from or to hear from, and I highly recommend any of her work. Um, on, and in her biography, it says uh, she lives in Los Angeles with her impossibly small and loving rescue chihuahuas, Bodhi and Amara. <laughs> That's so precious. This particular book is over 250 pages, not including the... Um, the index in the back and notes and each little chapter is cut up into questions and answers to those questions there are well she's got nine chapters in here and then she's got her conclusion and acknowledgments and her thanks of course and the front is a note from the author this book includes actual encounters with spirits and people in the physical and earth realm loved ones, private clients, readers, workshop attendees, and so on. In writing about these experiences, the names and details have been changed to protect the identities of those involved. Spirit messages cannot be presented in their entirety in verbatim. They have been edited and consolidated for the purposes of this book. And we would not want to compromise anybody's um, confidentiality. How this book works, she says, is to keep the book simple and easy to use. The questions are organized by topic, obviously. Recently, a friend looked over the table of contents and, in surprise, asked rhetorically, Who knew that I'd want to know the answer to questions I didn't even know to ask? Now, a little bit more. Her mission is a medium. Here, a little bit about that. Since 1994, I've been dedicated to serving spirits and love by providing messages via a variety of platforms. One type of platform is what I call gallery-style presentations, which are large gatherings that I can have an audience of more than 500 in a room and a million or more watching online worldwide. Wonderful. For a more intimate group setting, spirit circles have no more than 10 sitters. And I think a lot of us have been to gatherings like that. Now, I'm just going to go over a couple of questions that she's asked, and my cat is probably going to make an appearance. She was just tapping on the computer. The first question, is there really an afterlife? Maybe death isn't quite a gulf between lives like we've assumed. Maybe it's time to let go of the idea that we live one life on earth and then once we die, a different one lived apart from all we enjoy and the people we love. Now, later in the book, she talks about, you know, in our pagan and metaphysical communities, we talk about the veil between the land of the living and the land of the dead. And especially during Samhain, we say that veil thins, but it also thins around Beltane time, which is, it's very close to Beltane right now. And she said in her experience, she doesn't really believe that there is a veil. She believes that there's basically one world that we're all participating in together. And I can completely understand her view on that. You know, as somebody who I talk to my own dad myself, all you have to do is call them. It's, it's not that difficult. And I suppose there will be times when they won't answer, but I've never had that happen. So I can see where she's coming from with that. Now, let's just flip a little bit more and read a little bit more. Here we go. This is on page 28. Do all spirits communicate with mediums in the same way? Unfortunately, no, she says. But it would make it so much easier for mediums if they did. The spirit's desire to communicate specific information as evidence that they have survived death is important to them. But this evidence doesn't always come to the medium in ways that are expected or preferred. In some cases, spirits can provide so much information that it is almost overwhelming. As the following example demonstrates, 
a male in spirit standing next to you. He's holding up a guitar. Yes, the female sitter exclaimed and started to cry. He looks great in a pair of jeans, I added. Yes, she exclaimed in response. I'm hearing the vroom vroom of a motorcycle. Yes, she shouted in even more tears. Accidental drug overdose, I reported. Yes, oh yes, she whispered with a sob. This dramatic call and response between the spirit and sitter continued for some time. With each piece of information, the spirit revealed a well-rounded picture of himself and his relationship to the beautiful woman sitting before me. Wow, it's pretty intense. I'm sure plenty of you have had experiences where you've communicated with your own dad in that way, or perhaps a medium has communicated for you. Later on in the book, okay, here we go, page 90. Do spirits need to learn how to connect with us in the physical realm? She says, yes, they do. Imagine if suddenly you were unable to speak or use hand gestures to drive a point home or move objects with ease. After a life in the physical body, spirits live in a world of expanded consciousness, thought, and energy. As a medium, it's my job to be aware of the subtle communications from the spirits as their energy interacts with mine. It's always been my experience that spirits, who are now in the afterlife, need to be coached by more experienced spirits who are good communicators and act as my guides. It's very succinct. Oh, here's a good question, number 43, that's on page 163. Do flowers have a spiritual significance to spirits? Funerals have flowers, lots of them. So it's easy to assume that flowers might have significance to spirit. But let's not forget that flowers are meaningful parts of many celebrations. Birthdays, proms, weddings, births, and of course... Valentine's Day. In my work as a medium, I've noticed that flower references are plentiful and tend to relate to a personal, a very personal family story, even if death is part of the story. Later in that chapter, she says the innumerable flower messages I've received over the years makes it impossible to ignore the importance of flowers and spirit communications. And then she has some suggestions. Keep favorite flowers in a vase near the photo of a loved one. You may find that activity in that area increases. That's a good idea. Pay attention to flower essences. For instance, if your grandmother loved lavender, make a notice of the times you smell lavender. Very true. If you've given flowers as a gift, pause a moment to thank loved ones in spirit for remembering you. Spirits, particularly the young in spirit, mention wanting to be remembered with growing things. Therefore, planting memorial trees and gardens is appreciated by spirits and also great for the earth. Isn't that beautiful? Now I'm going to forward to the end. Conclusion. As the book comes to an end, I hope this has been a helpful start to understanding the world of spirits or an encouraging next step. The answers shared in this book share several things in common. They support the idea that consciousness survives death. They provide an understanding that relationships continue beyond death. They encourage getting connected and staying connected to those we love in spirit so that we can be guided, comforted, and healed. And I'll skim down just a little bit. My work and I are accessible to you. I am working and teaching medium who will answer posts on Facebook and post photos on Instagram. I will be continuing to answer questions online and my newsletter, sign up at HollisterRand.com and magazines and events. Never stop being curious and never stop asking questions. The spirits are ready to answer. The end. Not really. This is a really good book. And I've read some of it to you, but you would benefit more from getting this. Especially, you know, if you want to give a gift to someone who's in grieving or to people who are just learning. This is this is broken down so nicely. So I highly recommend this, this beautiful book. 
Blessed be.